Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 20, verses 1 to 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for this vineyard. Now when he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. He went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, you also go into the vineyard and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. Again, he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle and said to them, Why have you been standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard and whatever is right, you will receive. So when evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the laborers and give them their wages, beginning with the last to the first. And when those who came who were hired about the eleventh hour, they each received a denarius. But when the first came, they supposed that they would receive more, and they likewise received each a denarius. And when they had received it, they complained against the landowner, saying, These last men have worked only one hour, and you made them equal to us, who have borne the burden, and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Do you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what is yours and go your way. I wish to give it to this last man the same as to you. Is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things? Or is your eye evil because I'm good? So the last will be first and first last, for many are called but few chosen. Of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I have been given the verses from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 20, verse 1 to 16, to talk to you about today. In these verses, we read a parable in which Christ explains to us how the kingdom of God is like. This parable, like many of Jesus' other parables, is a story about an employer and those who work for him. Jesus uses this story to answer a question from the previous chapter, verse 27 in which his disciple Peter asks Jesus, look, we have left everything and followed you. What will we have? And Christ's reply came in stages. First, he gave a promise of a reward. He says, you can be sure that when the son of man sits on his glorious throne in the new age, the new 12 followers of mine will also sit on thrones to rule the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or mothers or children or fields for my sake, will receive a hundred times more and will be given eternal life. Second, Christ gave a warning. He reminds us that God's manner of distributing a reward is not the same as humans. Instead, Christ works with the principle, many who are first will be last and last will be first. Finally, we come to this parable. These workers hired at the very beginning of the working day agreed to work for the common daily wage. Throughout the day, we see the landowner went to the places where the workers usually gathered and found some standing idle in the marketplace and hired them to do the work in his vineyard. This makes us stop and reflect whether there are any of us who are remaining idle towards God. Are we waiting for God to come and hire us into his works instead of realizing the gifts that Christ have already put in us? Gifts that enable us to engage in his sacred service and to fulfill the duties he has aligned for us. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, we read, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. This parable is about God's calling and the willingness to follow him and getting a fair reward. We are promised that we all have work in his vineyard and we will all be called to build his kingdom. We read that the landowner promised the earlier workers a day's wage and the other workers hired throughout the day were not promised a specific wage, only whatever is right. He promised to pay all the latter workers fairly. Later on, when it came for the time to pay the workers, the men hired last were paid first, and that too for a full days of work. The men who hired, who worked all day, saw these men coming away from the pay table, and they probably thought to themselves, if the landowner is paying these guys a full day's pay for only one hour of work, then surely we will get far more. However, the men hired first, earlier in the day, and those who had worked all day got paid exactly the same. 
Here, the landowner did exactly as promised, but after being paid, the men hired first to cook up their complaint. They were offended that the landowner gave the men who worked less equal pay than those who had borne the burden and the heat of the day. It is easy for us to sympathize with those who had worked all day. They worked while the others were idle, yet they were paid exactly the same. The landowner reminded them that he had been completely fair to them. He did them no wrong and had broken no promise. He rebuked them for their jealousy and resentment. There are many characters within the Bible which we can see being envious. For example, Cain. When God accepted Abel's sacrifice but was not pleased with Cain's, Cain became jealous of Abel and he committed sin. Also, the prodigal son's elder brother. Because of the elder brother's obedience, he thought he deserved a blessing and he could not allow his father to accept the prodigal son. We should remember that nobody is big and nobody is small in front of God. We are all made in his image and likeness. In Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 17, it says, For the Lord your God is God of gods and the Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality and accepts no bribes. This teaches us to destroy the spiritual pride within ourselves and to be happy for others generally. Peter and the disciples knew that they had given up a great deal to follow Jesus, and Peter wanted to know what they would get in return. Through this parable, Jesus assured Peter that the, and the disciples that they would be rewarded. But the principle of many who are first will be last and last will be first meant that God may not reward in a way that man expects. Some also think that this parable speaks of the way that people come to God at different stages of their life. Some may come at the beginning of their life, in their youth, in adulthood, in old age, or right at the end. Like the thief on the right-hand side, he was the same as the one on the left. However, the thief on the right repented and Jesus accepted him and promised, you will be with me today in paradise. There is no superiority in faith or repentance. We will all receive the same reward. This is the essence of God's grace. He rewards and blesses man according to his will and his pleasure, not necessarily according to what men deserve. The system of law is easy for us to figure out. You get what you deserve. However, the system of grace may seem foreign to us. God deals with us according to who he is and not according to who we are. It is important for us to understand that the landowner did not treat anyone unfairly. Though he was more generous to some than to others, we can be assured that God will never ever be unfair to us. Though he may, for his own purpose and pleasure, shower greater blessings on someone else whom we may seem as less deserving. When we are baptized, we become members of Christ's living body. And as we grow in grace and get the true spirit, we should be glad when any of our members are honored. Jesus emphasizes both the calling and the choosing of God is based on his grace. When we choose to join God in his vineyard, we may have to trade off some of our worldly happiness. And some of us realize this calling in the early stages of life and some later. So let us prepare ourselves to be available for God's calls, call to work in his vineyard rather than being jealous of others. Thank you.